What's up, buddies? Welcome back to Data Driven MQV. If you haven't already, check out the July PCV update video. I'll link it above and in the description below. In a nutshell, if you don't know why we are cutting a hole in a brand new PCV valve, that video will fill you in on the theory and the logic behind doing what we're doing. Otherwise, let's hop right in with the modification. As a reminder, all modifications done to your car are at your own risk. For starters, you're going to want a permanent marker, and I used a wood burning kit. It was a $12 thing I bought on a whim from Walmart using a uh, shading tip. We'll set that aside for now. But essentially, we're going to mark the rough area on the valve where we want to make the cut. It's going to be all the way toward the front of the engine when it is mounted in the car, like that. And we're leaving roughly a 20 millimeter gap on right there. Alrighty, so with our valve marked, we can go ahead and start burning the hole into it. Now, the reason why I am using this wood burning kit is because you want to avoid using a rotary tool because it makes a huge mess and any kind of shavings that end up inside of the valve, you will one, not be able to clean them out, and two, there's a very good chance that they will either clog up the air oil separator or get stuck under a check valve, something along those lines. You will also want to make sure that you are doing this in a very well ventilated area because some nasty fumes are going to be put off. Now the reasoning for having such a large hole on the bottom side is because anytime you want to move air and not oil or you know liquid, you want to have as small of a pressure drop across the opening as possible. So we want to have as much surface area as possible. That little 20 millimeter bit that we did not cut out is specifically because that is the direct spot where vacuum is pulled. And you do want to probably have it shielded a little bit from cam spray. Now go slow because you can always cut more, but we're going to go ahead and speed up the video so we can get to actually opening it up. All right, so once you're at this point, go ahead and just pull off any little stringy bits and stuff you might have remaining. And then you can grab a screwdriver or something to very carefully pry out the piece that we are attempting to remove if you didn't cut 100% all the way through, which is the case here. So now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to kind of pull off these little stringy bits from the inside, pulling them out because this is stuff we do not want to break off and get into the valve. Any kind of little shavings and stuff have the potential to, you know, get stuck in a check valve or fall into the cam cradle or, you know, clog up the air oil separator. So all things we do not want. So just kind of carefully pulling out whatever we can that was left over from making the uh, cut, burning the hole into the valve. So the main priority is just make sure nothing has any potential that it might want to break off with repeated heat cycles, heat and cool cycles, stuff like that. Something that seems to work pretty well is just like a little pick set to uh, reach inside and just snag the edges and get the loose stuff that comes out. So once all is said and done, you should have a relatively clean hole there with nothing, you know, sticking off that might break off, fall into the valve or anything along those lines. So as for the results of the valve, I ran this experimental valve on my car for one autocross event at the end of July to make sure that no terrible shit happened and there was no big change in how much oil made it into the inline catch can. There's a link to the trip report section of the website where I went over all this in more detail, but essentially all was good to go with no weird behaviors or any kind of crankcase pressure issues. So this valve was then removed and put on Jacob's 2015 GTI from the July update video to see if it actually fixed a problem on a known problem car. 
So essentially, we rolled up on the morning of the August autocross event and swapped the valve onto his car. You can see the one we installed to it there. Actually, it was probably a tiny bit more cut out, but in a nutshell, Jacob was able to do all five of his autocross runs with zero smoking. As a reminder, he did two events prior to this one, neither of which he was able to get all of his runs at. Once was on his original Mark 7 AH revision PCV valve with only four out of five runs, and once last time was on the Mark 8 full retrofit without the modification where he was only able to make two of the six runs because it actually smoked worse than on the original Mark 7 valve. The fact that his car smoked worse on the full retrofit in June than it did on the original Mark 7 valve was what led me to taking a closer look at the two styles of Mark 7 PCV valve and the various revisions year over year which we touched on in the July PCV update video. The 2015 and 18 vehicles all pull vacuum on the cam cover and not the blow by passage directly. So that ultimately led to the theory of venting the PCV to the cam cover as a potential solution on the early cars. 2015 and 16 model years in particular seem to be the most problematic, and doing this in theory should allow the pressure differentials to equalize without driving oil up the blow by passage. That's already recording. Yep. All right, so we got five runs in on Jacob's 2015 GTI has previously never run a full autocross event without smoking. In the last event, he had the full retrofit. Everything is hot as fuck. Yeah, sure. Damn, we got some blood. <laughs> this is the valve that we drilled the hole in the bottom and well, not drilled, I melted a hole in the basically a hot knife type thing. And we'll see if by allowing the crankcase to vent in places other than the blow-by passage, basically sucking on the cam cover as well as the blow-by passage, see if that has the intended effects. Oh my god. Basically Oh my here. gosh. So, it fucking works. Fuck yeah, science! Oh my god. Yeah, dude, you don't even need to worry about dumping that out. Nice. Oh, yeah, that makes me really happy. Yeah, dude. I think that's a fucking win. Yeah. Well, anyways, obviously we had good luck with Jacob's car, which is a 2015 CNTA engine code for reference. But what about others? Since the July update video, I've been contacted by a few others who've done the same modification and had results that basically mirror that of Jacob's car. One is a 2015 CHHA equipped GTI on the other side of the pond in England. For reference, the CHHA has a lot of the same internal part numbers as a US market 2015 CXCA with a few parts also shared from the CNTA like Jacob's. The owner did the full Mark 8 retrofit, he did a track day, still got smoking. He contacted me via the Facebook page. He ventilated the PCV valve as described in this video. He went back to the track and has not had any further issues since. He has no inline catch can or anything like Jacob or I do. Another successfully modified valve was on a 2015 CXCA equipped GTI. The owner was able to induce smoking on the street while taking an interstate on-ramp at higher speeds. He ventilated the PCV valve as well, right after that last video was released, and that has since resolved the issue. I actually checked in on him just recently, which it's been a month since he did the modification, just to make sure there's still no problems, and yeah, it's all good. He actually has the same Jack Spaniel racing catch can as Jacob and I do, um, and it's remained bone dry the entire time, just like what mine does in daily use. The factory air oil separator seems to work really well as long as you have a sufficient vacuum source, which the Venturi provides. Um, it results in the can just not filling up much in normal use. Very convenient. Now there is one 2015 CXCA equipped GTI in Canada that smoked on track with the Mark 8 full retrofit. The owner ventilated the valve as is outlined in this video. He went back to the track and while the smoking was slightly improved, he was still able to induce it, unfortunately. What's odd is that he noted that it seemed to be more preventable if he kept the RPMs up as opposed to coming out of a corner in one gear too high. 
as we've learned already, there's a myriad of potential things at play, so I'm hoping we can get it sorted out for him sometime soon. I've been compiling a bunch of data on a bunch of different parts that these Mark 7s were originally equipped with across different engine codes, different years, by build date, so on and so forth. Um, and I've slowly been drawing some conclusions as to what the reasoning is for different cars having such wildly different likelihoods of success based on some of the parts they're equipped with for a given PCB solution. I no longer think that the oil baffle is a contributing factor. Uh, next time I'll go over this information that I've amassed and we'll look at about 30 cars worth of VIN data. Um, you know, year over year alongside PCB solutions that have or haven't worked for each. I've got a theory on why the Mark 7 PCB valves had such a fundamental change going from the 2018 to the 2019 model year, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit as well. Lastly, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who either likes, subscribes, or shares anything they see with the channel, and especially those who have reached out to me personally, whether through my own Facebook page or through the Data Driven MQB Facebook page, to give me information that may be helpful in understanding a little bit more and piecing together the parts of this puzzle. Um, finally reached the point of monetization, so that's at least enough a year to offset the web hosting fees to keep the website running and you know not costing me money like it has for the last year or so. So thank you guys for that.